Hey guys, we're back again with a brand new review video. And in this review, we're gonna be taking a look at this. This is the Ayama, and I'm probably saying that wrong. Sorry, I'm not great at repronouncing some of these foreign names, but this is the Ayama Tube A3. Now, this is actually a pretty neat preamp. It's actually a tube preamp. Now, if you're not familiar with this brand name, you might be familiar with the brand name at which it sells on the Amazon store, Aoshki. Now, if you're not familiar, you should take a look at some of my other reviews. I did a review on one of their subwoofer amplifiers. It's just a little TPA 3116 D2 a little subwoofer amplifier that they've bridged and it's pretty neat. I actually did some projects with it and I liked it. And so they asked me if I wanted to do another review and they sent me some ideas of uh, products and and this is one that you guys have actually asked for a review on so we're gonna do something unique we're not just going to talk about this we're gonna do some tests on it as well so I'm gonna go ahead and get on the computer we can take a look at what the volume control does we're gonna take a look at the treble and the bass control so you have not only an idea of what it does based off of my experience but also you'll have the data so that you know exactly what it is going to give you so let's go ahead and talk about why you might want a product like this. This is not uh, what you would consider a typical amplifier. This is a pre-amplifier. That means this goes before your amplifier. Now a typical amplifier is going to have on the back uh, speaker wire outputs. This does not. This actually just has RCA. You're going to see an RCA input and an RCA output. Now that's because what you're going to do is you're going to take your signal, whichever signal it is, whether it comes from a computer or your phone or a laptop or, or even a television, and you're going to plug this into here and then you're going to take this output and now plug it into your amplifier. So whether you're talking about like a little board amp or whether you're talking about the DIY Hi-Fi amplifier, which I built recently, you could plug this right in front of it. Now when you do that, you've all of a sudden got volume control and now your tone adjustments as well. But that's not really the reason why most people will buy a tube preamp. Most people will buy a tube preamp because of its tubes. You see, there was a time where all amplifiers were considered tube amplifiers, and that's because they used vacuum tubes to create the signal or they amplify the signal that uh, you had. Now, we, we don't really use vacuum tubes anymore. There are some amplifiers you can buy that are still tube amplifiers, but really, you just don't get that anymore. And tube amps were known to have a unique sound signature and that sound signature usually is described as having more warmth. So one of the reasons why you might want a tube preamp then is to recreate that sound that tube amplifiers used to give you. So you can play this in front of like a new class D amplifier and this will give you hopefully the same type of warmth that you are getting from an old tube amplifier without having to spend all the money. And so a lot of people will buy these and this was actually a very inexpensive tube preamp. Now this particular unit does use some Chinese tubes and that is probably because this is actually made in China. However, some people prefer tubes made from different countries and, and honestly, a different variety of tubes. And the reason why people sometimes like different tubes is because they can give you a different sound signature. So each tube might actually sound a little bit different. Now the great thing about this particular tube preamp is it takes a variety of tubes. You can actually interchange them. Now you'll have to buy the tubes yourself, but you can. Now, I haven't got a chance to test them out, but here's a list of some of them that will work inside this particular amplifier. So if you don't particularly like the sound of these particular tubes and you want to try a different one, you can. So now that you kind of understand why you might want to preamp, let's talk a little bit about this and then we're going to go ahead and get into some testing. Uh, this is actually a pretty nice unit, especially for the price. It's all aluminum. The outside casing is all aluminum, which is pretty nice. It's not necessarily the highest quality aluminum, but it's nice that it is actually aluminum and not plastic. Even the buttons and knobs are in aluminum. They're not plastic, which once again is a huge selling feature for these types of units. And it does have a power switch on and off. It's just a toggle switch right here. Does have a power input, a 12 volt, two amp power supply comes with the unit. So you don't have to worry about getting anything for that. As far as the bottom of it, the only thing on the bottom is the rubber feet, which are attached there. So it does have some stability when it is on the desk. 
All right guys, so that's enough talking kind of about the amp fire. So let's go ahead and get testing and then I'll give you some pros and cons about this. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the test setup we got going on here. I just took uh, one Dayton Audio MK402 uh, bookshelf speaker I'm setting up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the Dayton DTA 120BT. That's the uh, 120 watt Bluetooth amplifier they have going on here. And I'm gonna be running that for my MSI laptop with the program OmniMic. Now OmniMic will give us real time measurements, which is really nice, so we'll be able to see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open OmniMic. Now this program, I'm just gonna get a baseline. So right now we don't have any preamp hooked up. This is just the speaker directly from the amplifier. Now we are not gonna change the amplifier volume. We're just gonna leave everything hooked up except add the preamp later. So this is the frequency response of the speaker by itself hooked up directly to the amplifier. Don't really worry about the frequency response. That's not what we're worried about right now. Right now, I'm just gonna add another live curve. Now, what this is gonna do is allow us to have a direct comparison between the preamp and the amplifier. I'm gonna set the volume control to halfway, and we're gonna go ahead and just test what this does at half volume on the preamp. So, are we gonna get the same frequency response? Are we gonna get higher or lower? And if you notice, we are getting a little bit higher. In fact, uh, it's almost five decibels higher at half volume. So I was curious, you know, where do I have to go in order to get it back to like our baseline? So if we start turning this down, you're going to notice that right about two thirds of the way down, we start to get the response to be about the same. Now this is neat and interesting because the response you notice from the speaker hasn't really changed. That's pretty good. We, we want to see a uh, not very big change of the actual frequency response. Um, and we also notice that we're getting a pretty decent uh, volume attenuation when we start attenuating it down. In fact, we can get it down to zero and, and uh, have absolutely no sound coming out of the speaker. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start turning the volume up. I want you to just notice how uh, quickly it goes up. And I also want you to notice how much more sound we're going to get out of it. So we're measuring this, of course, with SPL. And as we turn it all the way up, we're going to notice that it gets to be 10 decibels louder. That's a pretty good increase. I was actually really impressed with the amount that you can uh, turn up the volume. Uh, so that's, that's, a, you know, that's a positive thing. If you, for example, have an amplifier that you want to be louder that's not quite as loud as you'd like it to be, this tube preamp would be something that would be beneficial for you. Now, all you're seeing me do here is just check the different frequencies and noticing that it has gone up evenly. Now, that's something you do want to see because some amplifiers will, unfortunately, when you turn the volume up, the frequency response can change. It can have some characteristics where, you know, unfortunately, it, it turns the high end up louder or the low end louder. I'm going to go ahead and bring this back down to about that two thirds volume where it's, where it's even. And we're going to start checking the treble. Now, with the treble control, you're going to see that it's starting to uh, really start to attenuate from you know, right between 1,000 to 2,000 hertz, and then it's going to go back up. Now, it was all the way down. This is all the way back up. That is about 5 decibel difference. That's pretty impressive, actually. And the thing that I like to see about this is the fact that it's doing a gradual incline and decline of the treble. Why is that important? Some of these just don't do that, and that's what you do want. So this could actually be good for a speaker designer as well when we're testing our bass response. If we feel like we're a little bit low or a little bit high, we can go ahead and just attenuate this a little up and down, and this is going to give us a nice slope uh, which is preferable. Now this starts around 600 hertz for the bass, and it is actually about a 10 decibel difference in the bass section, which is pretty impressive. And both of these specs are spot on with what the manufacturer says. They say it should get a plus or minus 10 decibels uh, in the bass response and plus or minus 5 decibels in the treble response. I was skeptical that that was going to happen, but sure enough, that's exactly what we tested. All right, so now that we've tested it, let's go ahead and talk about some pros and cons. The pro, 
of course, is the way that it measured. I love the fact that it didn't really affect frequency response unless you wanted it to. So if you wanted to turn your treble up and down, you could. I love the fact that it was that sloping linear uh, rise or attenuation that you're getting on either the tweeter or the woofer. I think that could help not only a speaker designer, but I think that's also the way that it should be done. And there are some preamps that don't do it this way. So I really do like this. I also like the points that they picked. They picked 600 on up for the uh, bass and about 1,000 on down for the treble, which is, I, I think, just the really good combination to pick. Now, there are a few uh, cons uh, but let's talk about one more pro. The pro is the, the tubes you can interchange. We've already mentioned some of the tubes you can interchange with. That's really cool. So you can do some experimentation, figure out which tubes you do like, uh, and there's quite a few variety that you can do. The cons are the tubes that it does come with are not typically the most highly desirable. It doesn't mean it sounds bad. It just means that you can get a different sound signature from other tubes. Another con is the volume control as well as the treble and bass control. The problem that I have with them is there's no center point. Uh, what I mean by that is there's nowhere uh, either marking or a notch or anything that lets you know that you've gotten back to center. Now, it's pretty easy still to get it back to center, but it would be nice to have that. There's also no remote control support, so those of you who want to put this, like, say, in front of a TV or something, you're going to have to get up and actually change the volume with your hand. So bringing it back to some of the old school days when remote controls didn't actually exist. Although I think that most of the time this is going to be a desktop amp. So are there any other real pros and cons? I can't really think of any. If you're in the market for a tube preamp, I think this is a pretty good value for it. It's a $46 and occasionally it has a flash sale. If it does go on flash sale, make sure that you've subscribed to the channel and that you've hit that bell to get notifications because I'll let you guys know if this or any of the other products do go on flash sale for you. Now that's all I have for you guys today. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to like the video, you know, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks, guys. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you later. It's 123Toyed, and I'm out.